Way back in 1955, John L. Gaunt Jr. received the Pulitzer Prize in the general photography category for a photo he took the previous year. At the time, Gaunt was working for the Los Angeles Times and ensured that his achievement only helped him with his career as well as the substantial amount of money he would have won for his poignant photograph. But although Gaunt accepted his prize, he didn't quite feel right about it. The circumstances of the photograph, some might say, was immoral and inappropriate, and it never sat right with Gaunt. The photograph was called Tragedy by the Sea. The picture was taken on a Mosa beach, with a very choppy sea in the background. The waves getting ready to crash onto the sand. On the sand stood a woman and a man. The woman can be seen clutching onto the man's shirt with a look of anguish in her face. Unknown to Gaunt, only moments before he took the photograph, the waves of the sea had taken the couple's small child from the shallow water he was playing in and dragged him out into the deeper water, and he was drowned. And what was once immortalised in the newspapers has now been given the same treatment but this time on the World Wide Web for many more generations to view, and here it will possibly live forever. When I first saw this picture and read about what exactly happened on that beach in 1954, I initially felt sadness and sorrow and so much sympathy for the couple. And then I felt another emotion. I felt a little bit of shame. I was shamed that I was viewing this photo and that I found it so interesting and that it affected me so much. I felt I shouldn't be looking at the photo. I felt the photo should not even exist. It felt incredibly wrong that a very emotional private moment, a moment of pure heartbreak should have ever been photographed. It felt like a massive intrusion on the couple's privacy. And then I learned that the photographer had won the Pulitzer and I wondered how he felt about the whole thing. Unfortunately, he's now long dead. But upon digging a little deeper, I found an original article that I'll be reading to you after I tell you what happened on that day in 1954. This is a version of the story you can easily find online. John Gaunt was relaxing at his beach home on the 3rd of April 1954 when he heard a neighbour shouting, something's happening on the beach. And just like a reflex action, John reached for his camera and brought into focus a man and a woman who were holding each other and looked like they were in despair. John then snapped off for images. Unknown to him, the couple's 19-month-old son had just been pulled out to sea and drowned. Now that is a version of this story you can find on most websites where this picture is featured. But I did find an article that gives a little bit more information to what actually happened that day and I want to read it out to you right now. Some of it will sound a little bit repetitive to what I've already said, but I believe it's interesting to see what the actual newspaper said about this. Beach home toddler feared drowned in the sea. A 19 month old baby strayed yesterday from his fenced Hamosa beach yard, toddled down to the surf and presumably was drowned and swept out to sea. The child Michael McDonald was the son of John and Lillian McDonald of 13 19th Street and Mosa Beach, only a few houses removed from the beach. Hermosa Beach police said they received a telephone call from Mrs. McDonald at 9.40 a.m. reporting the baby missing from the yard. She said he was there when she had checked 10 minutes earlier. As the search for Michael was getting started, Miss Beverly Murdoch, 22 of 1612 Strand, notified police that she had spotted the boy's body in the surf. And then, instead of telephoning, she ran several blocks to the police station for assistance. Police and lifeguards continued the search of the area throughout the day until nightfall, but could find no trace of the missing child. The search will continue today. And that was the article from the Los Angeles Times. Now, according to this article, a 20-year-old Mrs. Beverly Murdoch had noticed a little boy in the water, and instead of making any attempt to rescue him, she instead opted to run all the way to the police station. Now, I'm not judging her. I don't know the exact circumstances of that day, but it did strike me strange that she didn't actually go into the water and get him. Also, the parents seemed to be very dry on the photographs, and they had obviously made no attempt to wade into the waters. Maybe they thought it was hopeless, I don't know, I wasn't there, but this will play into what I've got to say a little bit later. Now, after noticing this, and after realising what my initial judgement were on the people of that day, I couldn't help myself but go to the comments section and see what the people were saying, and a lot of people were saying the same thing. From searching on the internet and looking through some of the negative comments underneath the photograph in the comments section, a lot of this negativity was aimed at the parents in the photograph. I quickly came to realise that a picture can be more damaging in other ways other than just being immoral. You see, this picture captured a moment in time that can easily be taken out of context. The anger and blame can easily be pointed towards the parents. 
Here are a few of the negative comments I found aimed towards the parents. One of the comments said, Am I the only one who's wondering why the couple doesn't look wet? Shirts and her. Did they not go in after the toddler? And the next comment says, Yes, I was wondering the same thing. No shoes off, no wet clothes. I don't know for certain, but I would think if this just happened to me, I would be in the water searching for my little one. Now, I was also guilty of these same thoughts. At first, my first thought was of sympathy and sadness for the couple. But then I started thinking, why are they dry? Why didn't they both swim out to the sea and try to find their child instead of standing there on the beach doing nothing? I started to imagine myself on that beach under those same horrific circumstances and now I would have, without a doubt, swam out to at least try and save my child regardless of if I could see him or not. I even felt judgement at Mrs Beverly Murdoch who decided to run to the police station instead of running into the water and she wasn't even in the picture. But I feel it was written in such a way to make people judge. But in reality, nobody really knows the exact circumstances of that day in that moment. And I should not be so fast to judge. And then I started to think once again, is this photograph morally right? I thought not. I thought, how would I feel if this picture was of me and my wife after losing a child? Would I be happy? No, I wouldn't. But regardless, the pain would still be there anyway. Here is what others had to say in the comment section of the photograph. One commenter says, this photo is appalling, intrusive, and it should never have been published. Another commenter said, I have to agree, I would be extremely put out had my anguish been spotlighted for all to see. There are many, many more comments along these lines, but the very next comment was referencing another picture showing John Gaunt receiving his prize. And in this picture, he was posing with other influential people, beaming with delight, holding the picture named Tragedy on the Beach. And here is what it said. One commenter said, the fact that the second photo shows a photographer smiling after receiving the prize for the photo is appalling to me. The other commenter says, winning a prize for somebody else's tragedy, right. And then the next comment says, I totally agree with all of your prior comments. I will take it one step further and call his actions despicable especially the acceptance of the award. I wonder how the parents felt about that. And so on and so on. The comments go on like that for quite some time. But once again, that's just a moment in time caught in a photograph, maybe out of context. Apparently, when John Gaunt took the photo, he had no idea what had happened. But the photographer's camera is never far away and he did what his instincts told him to feed his own family. He also had a small child at home, something that would later magnify his guilt when he knew what had actually happened. Apparently, when he was first told that he won the Pulitzer, he was quoted as saying the following, Gosh, fellas, I have to sit down. Followed moments later by, I'm ill to my interior. After John's death, his daughter wrote the following for his obituary in the LA Times. The image was hard for him to bear at first, she noted, and he was just 31 when he took the photograph and had a three-year-old daughter at home. The couple in the photograph lived locally, and although Gaunt did not know them, he knew people who did. And so we have learned from this that Gaunt did have a little bit of a guilty conscience about publishing the photograph, but he did hand it over after all. It was his job, and even though we felt uncomfortable, he still had it published. But if you look at this from another angle, maybe by the image being published for all to see, it unconsciously made every parent who saw the picture keep a keener eye on their children. Maybe this picture taught some people just how dangerous the sea can be, and if this picture has succeeded at keeping children safe over the years, is this a good thing? I think, yeah, even if my feelings are still slightly conflicted. But if this did happen to me, and I was told that this photograph could save other people from losing a child, I may well give my permission to show it. But what do you think? Well, I actually reached out on Instagram and I asked you guys, what did you think of this picture? And I made you aware that I was going to include it into the episode. And this is what you said. Alicia very kindly commented and she said, for the people who experienced the event, they will never forget it. Whether they were bystanders or the families involved, or even for the child that died, the event ripples on in the arts and the minds of all involved. This would be the case whether the photo existed or not. The photo is a ripple of reality that gradually loses its potency as those directly involved die off. All that lives on 
is the perceived emotion and the empathy it invokes. Another comment came from Debbie who said she could sense the despair wondering if she was appealing to him to plunge into the waves in a bid to rescue the little tot or trying to stop him taking that risk. And I really like that answer because I never looked at it from this angle. Maybe she was stopping the husband from going in. Maybe she thought it was hopeless and she didn't want to risk losing her husband as well. Maybe she was actually stopping him from going into the waves. That is quite interesting. Never looked at it from that way. And then my next comment is from Angela Celine and she says, What is the purpose of photojournalism? Is it not to capture the essence of human existence in all the ups and downs? If this is wrong, then all historic images of any suffering become wrong. He could do nothing to change the situation, but he could capture the raw and uninhibited pain. It's an image that evokes powerful empathy for most people, but what about the people who struggle to feel for others? Images like these help them learn to connect with the important people in their lives. Just my two cents. So after reading the comments that you guys left for me on Instagram and looking at the different comments online, I came to the conclusion that some photographs that show tragedy can have a place in history. And I will say this before we end today's episode. Out of all the comments that have been made on this photo, the negative and the judgmental, the majority of them show sympathy and sadness and compassion. And in a world that is being more and more desensitized, that's not such a bad thing. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.